So uh, let's go ahead and get this party started. That's what we got going on. So big shout out to everybody that's pulling in. Big shout out. Welcome to the live stream F1 Minute where we are going to talk all things Formula One and you get to put, be part of the content creation. So if you want to know what you got to do to be part of the content creation, there is a link in the live chat. There is a link in the description. You will click that link. You will be able to come in, do a call, come on to the audience, be part of the content creation that I do that most content creators don't want to let you have that opportunity. That is what we have doing. So big shout out to DG Big Blue. Big shout out to Jesse James Bell winning the big super chat prize this weekend big shout out to race x210 dg big blue navy Ura, and baraka in here as well yeah oh yeah 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 i should have i should i should be good now we should be golden now so hey you already know what time it is you already know what time it is. I, I shouldn't even have to tell y'all i shouldn't even have to tell y'all what time it is y'all should already be ready to go y'all should be ready to get this in uh make this thing have have fun do all of that good stuff so, so let's 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 stop playing around let's stop playing around and get, and get this in y'all let's let's make it happen so who's gonna go who's gonna go up first that's what i want to know who's coming in first because like i told you this is not about me more than it is about you all right so if i sit up here and i'm talking the whole time then it's gonna be short you know i'm gonna, I'm gonna say what i gotta say i done said plenty of what i've already had to say and i'm gonna dip and we'll just be waiting till the next time that we talk so well who, who's getting in Who's getting in? That's what I want to know. F1 Minute Live Show, Baraka. I, I should have known Baraka was going to hit top, pop tall. I'll go do it again. What's going on? Baraka, my brother. Hey, hey, What's, hey. First off, I know. Listen, listen, listen. Don't start that shit, man. Do not start that shit. I already know what you coming with, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's just, let's just, let's, let's take a, let's, let's, let's roll back a bit, you know. <laughs> go ahead. Hey, you, you my dog and all that. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, you, you reside in the state of Georgia, don't you? I do. Um, you know, but you know, a few weeks back, you know, I heard it was like you know, hook them a lot, a lot of orange. Hook them, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, for those who don't know, this past Saturday was probably pop, uh, uh, SEC close championship. Game. Close game, close game. It was a close game. Don't get me wrong. Uh, if there was a heart monitor, my, my the it would my heart rate was going through the roof. I, I but bet. I bet. Again, you know, you're my dog and all that. But I know. I, I know. gots to do it again. I know. I gots to. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> How about them dogs, baby? Man. How them, about them dogs? Man, them Pomeranians bite your ankles real good, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they do what they got to do, man. Them damn chihuahuas is aggravating as hell, man. God, hey, I man, you know what? I got to give you I gotta give you some claps for that, man. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. <laughs> they did their thing, man. You know, it's the only loss we got on the record, too. And it's yeah. the second loss from the same team. It's hard to beat a team twice. And that was a dogfight game, but I don't know it was what's going to happen going fight. forward, man. It was a dog. I, and Georgia being say, home, that was yeah. crazy energy, well, for real. Hey, listen, you know, Atlanta's like our second home to us, even though, you know, nice. we went. But welcome to the SEC, Texas. Thank you. Know? you. Thank you. All, all I, I'm not gonna forget all the fans before the season started at Texas. All they wanted was bring me Georgia. That's yeah, all they said. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. That's what we do. All we want the top dog. We want the top dog. Hey, hey, good, good, and that's great. That's all great and all that. But sometimes you, you know, you just you're just coming into the conference though. Yeah, there's a hey. hierarchy. There's a hierarchy in here. True. You know, true. yes, Al Alabama is going through their little slump. Right. You right. know, but. Tennessee, you know, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, right. Bama, Auburn. But don't act like he, Texas ain't been representing the SEC, hey, though, man. Texas has been representing well. Don't get right. me wrong. Right. Texas has been representing well. Georgia put it. But Georgia, Georgia. They did their thing, you, man. Yeah. Wasn't our best season, but we shown. Right. That we 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 are we we dogs. Y'all dogs. dogs. Y'all dogs. I'm gonna give it we, to y'all dogs. Y'all dogs. dogs. Yeah, mind you, like prior that that second play, you know, yeah. when our uh, quarterback got concussed, you know, his helmet sent flying. And we had a we had a Sam Carson, we had a Sam Carson bet, yeah, and then I was I was stressed. Don't get me wrong. Man, if you kickers are ass these days, man. Kickers yeah. suck these days, man. Pros ain't yeah. college. Kickers yeah. are horrible. Oh yeah, but you know, it's all we got a week. We got a one week bye while you guys yeah. have to you know start the season fighting. But it look it's looking promising for you guys. But it is. We gotta get we gotta play Clemson. You know, yeah, you gotta, gotta play get Clemson. That. Hey, it, that's a possible win. Don't if if you don't win, I'm you'll be hearing from me. Trust okay. me. Okay. If y'all okay. if y'all if y'all you'll be hearing from me. Okay. But yeah, all, right. all I gotta say is, how about them? how about them dogs? I got you, brother. I got you. I got you. <laughs> but I got all right. You. <laughs> 
All right, to answer your question, uh, I think, what was the question? I know. Brother, it's, any, it's any one of these. Any one of these questions you want to address, man, you feel free. Any one. It's free uh, for all. Whatever you want to pick, uh, brother. You know what? Haas has been very impressive this season. Yeah. Second you know, half of the season, for sure. Second half, especially the second half of the season, because... What about man Barack at? You know, Toyota coming into the fray, you know, yeah, yeah. all that other good stuff. But... What? It's hopeful. We're hopeful. You know, we could have gotten six in the championship. Okay. But Alpine and Gasly, G Gasly pulled pulled it in. I can't. I'll I'll give him his no, flowers. Gasly pulled in a solid for Alpine. He did. He did. And although speaking about Alpine though, the way they treated this whole Ocon situation is criminal. They couldn't. They 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 couldn't let Ocon give his get his last race with the team. He had a special helmet ready and all that. But they yeah. couldn't give it to him. No shade to uh, what's his name, Jack Doohan? Jack is that Doan. his name? Yeah, Doohan. Yeah. No shade to him. You know he's a racer. You know, up and coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm not gonna hate him. I'm gonna hate the organization. Yeah, and then go. I can't, and I can't take that organization seriously anymore because they're gonna yeah. still be in the team. They're gonna be on the. They're gonna be in the sport, but they ain't gonna develop an engine, which is very weird. You, yeah, from to developing from a from a works team to a customer team, that's kind of yeah. Crazy. It, it's crazy, you know. It's like yeah, they're going to Mercedes, and yes, Mercedes are looking pretty good. Their engine wise, it's promising for next year. So is Ferrari. Uh, questions on Honda with Red Bull, given that this their last year, it's just depending on their aero. And I think that's all the manufacturers that I've named. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. That's that's a shame, but ha back to Haas, we could have gotten six, but you know what? We're looking hopeful. We're looking quite hopeful. Yeah, uh, McLaren, gr great for, you know, uh, sealing up the championship. Hey, yeah. you know, big ups to them. Uh, wasn't Ferrari, so I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Damn. Mercedes, it's going to be interesting. Well, it's going to be interesting with Mercedes with now they're, with Lewis leaving the team. Okay. Uh, let's see how um, Russell and um, who's 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 getting the seat again? I'm I'm blinking today. Antonio, uh, Antonio, uh, yeah, Eton, um, Kim, Ante, Kim, 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 it, I'm, if this move for Mercedes is showing is that they are going to ride the wave of giving him time, hopefully. In okay. an ideal world, you know, he's he looked pretty good for F, in F2. He looked pretty decent. I, I'll give him his flowers for that. But I feel like I'm on the sh I'm in the ship of like, it's maybe too soon. It may be too it's maybe too early for him to come come into the team. So. I hope this is a big, big gamble that Toto Wolf is making. It's a big gamble. It's like this is the I think it the is. biggest gamble. Actually, this is the, their biggest gamble since signing Lewis Hamilton. Damn. This is their yeah, biggest you gamble. Might, you know what? You might because be mind right you, when that, if if people don't if people can't remember when Mercedes first came back and Lewis signed that that deal with Mercedes, people were looking at Lewis. And we're saying it's like, yo, are you throwing away your career or something? Like, what's going on? Like, you're leaving a very well worked team at the time, sort of, kind of. They were up and down in McLaren to go to Mercedes, but look how that turned out. He won them eight constructor titles. He won seven drivers titles. So this is they're gonna. This is gonna be their biggest risk since that since signing Lewis Hamilton. For Red Bull, one side of the garage looks like they're ready for the season. The other side of the garage, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if that 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 topic is, that's going to be a topic. Yeah, bro, it could be a topic. It could, yo, All right, because I'm gonna tell you like this: that's... all these fake ass narratives about Max and the third slowest team's car. No, it's Perez okay. who was not a good driver. Yeah. Man. Okay. Come on, man, we got to stop this shenanigans, man. It's like, and, I'll, and Perez, yeah. I can't make no more. I no. can't give Perez mm. no more grace, brother. No, I I never gave him grace to be uh, at halfway halfway through the season, and you're you're defending him, and I wasn't. Right. True. <laughs> True. So yeah, we got so, Kenny Buzz coming up, yeah, y'all. We, we we getting some time with Perez. All right, Go you know ahead. what? Let Kenny, you, okay. let, let, let Kenny, Kenny cook, cook and, and then, then we're going to come back on. The, okay, got you. Yes. Got you.
That's gotcha. a bet. All right, we got we got Kenny Buzz coming up next. Yo, if you in the chat and you want to come up, don't be scared. Don't be talking shit in the background. Bring yourself right on up. What's up, Kenny Bugs in the house? What's up, baby? <laughs> What's going on, Jay? Man, what's popping, brother? Hey. What you got? Listen, what was Baraka talking about? Who took the risk? Mercedes? Right. Yeah, he's saying he's saying they take this is the biggest risk. Well, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I get what you said. Lewis Hamilton took the risk. <laughs> oh, okay. I, Lewis, I was Hamilton, confused. Lewis Hamilton took the risk. Right. That's really what Dude, it is. I'm like, oh, whoa. What was going on with that? Right. Look, let me ask you something, Jay. Go ahead, brother. If Nikki Lauda came to you and said, you are the one I want to see in our car. Would you question him? Or would you? I mean, no. Would you doubt what he's telling you? Hell no. Not Nikki Lop. Shit. Not that you would. Looking. You would just automatically make that decision because he took his right. time to make that decision. But I mean, it's that's something Nikki to do. With, right. Right. The consideration is, is is heavily weighted when it comes from somebody like Nikki. You, you see what I'm saying? So, okay. Well, anyway, let um. I mean, I don't even know what the subject matter is because I had to, I had to reboot all kinds of stuff. It could be, it could be whatever on. you want, brother. We talking about Ferrari. We talking about Max and his crashing out. We talking about Red Bull next okay, season. Okay, any one of those type Ferrari, Max. whatever you want to do, brother. Let's talk about Max. Let's talk about Max as, you, as your famous quote in his clowning China shop. <laughs> <laughs> and his clowning. Is there any doubt in anybody's mind that he told that he told? Russell, well, Russell claimed he said, I'll, I'll run your ass into the wall. Not mine. <laughs> Not mine. After the way he dropped his car on top of Lewis's. Give me a break. This dude is dangerous and he's a clown. And anytime anybody tries to challenge him on the track, he can't handle it. He can't control himself, just like he can't control himself in front of the cameras. The same thing he does in front of the cameras is what he does on the track. Fact. He's going to try and bully and force everybody. As a matter of fact, wasn't it seven years ago when they asked Lewis at a press conference what it's like to drive against Max, to race against Max? And he says, well... He says, like, do you drive differently against Max? He said, well, with Max, you have to give him more room. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a subtle way of saying this dude is dangerous. Right. He will do some dangerous stuff. Okay? Now, his trick got played on him by Piastri. And Piastri, I love that dude. For oh, real, I love ice him. in his veins, bro. Oh my God! The comment that he made on the radio. <laughs> hey, hey, true driving from a champion that one. <laughs> oh my God! Right. He's like, this right. Is cool. So that's a that's a world championship move, huh? Right, 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 right. Exactly, okay. bro. Because now Matter that fact, he said, "Yeah, move of a world champion that one." That's what he said. There you that's go. what he said. Okay. The bottom line issue is here. In 2021. Max was pulling these same moves, dive bombing into the corner, forcing drive other drivers on the outside who had the lead to make a decision. Either he's going to crash into you or you avoid him and give him the room. And he came on his radio and said exactly that. He didn't give me any room. Well, what did, the, what did they, what did the rules, what did the amended rules that they came up with and see this is the whole thing you shouldn't have to change the driver's rules anyway why would you be changing rules for drivers drivers want to get their advantage they're gonna do whatever they can and so are the, so are the teams so no drivers should not get to make those kind of decisions they should be done by professional referees and that's why these former drivers should never ever be stewards Mm. because that's, that's some bullshit that's a fair perspective okay you don't know a motherfucking thing that we don't know just watching 
You can't talk about something that we don't know about from watching Formula One because this is just rules. Either you can or can't do it, either it's allowed or it's not. The one thing I don't hear them talking about when they're talking about the way Max drives, is you can't run another driver off the track. That is written in the form in in the regulations. And now they've turned it into this questionable thing that, well, if you're on the inside, as long as you lead at the apex, you can run them off the court, run them off the track. Basically. So I heard one of the other drivers say, leading into this weekend, saying, okay. Yeah, all right. I, oh, Jensen Button. That's mm-hmm. who it was. He's like, okay, that's fair and dandy when you're at uh, in, Bar- in Abu Dhabi or at uh, Coda. But what about when you're at Monaco where there's nothing but walls? That's okay. Right. So if it's not okay in Monaco, why is it okay on these tracks with, you know, these open tracks? Right. Okay, these these drivers have cornered themselves into stupidity with the way they want to interpret the rules. And it's just stupid. You shouldn't you should have to allow another driver on the inside or the outside to be able to stay on the line. If you don't allow them to stay on the line, you force them off the track. It's that, cool. simple. It's that simple. I, I don't know how common sense this shit can be on top, you know, past that. He <laughs> said, all right, hold on, Kenny Buzz. We're going to let you keep cooking. We're going to let Uno get a shot. We're going to let Uno come in here. Kenny Buzz is about to be cooking tonight. I can already tell. Appreciate you, Kenny Buzz. You got let's that, man. This. Hey, let's get Hey, don't go nowhere, though, bro. Make sure you make I don't sure know. I'm coming all back. Right, all right, all right. That's a bet. We got Uno coming to the stage. Uno is up next. Uno, bro, what's the business twin? What's popping with you? What's up? Can man, you hear what's me? going on, brother, man? Yeah, Am we I got coming you. clear? We got you, brother. Let's go. Yeah, well, what else? I see you. I see you. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> and? I see you. I see you. There you go. What's popping? <laughs> there you go. Unlocking <laughs> and shocking and Let's rocking. Let's go. Right. As, I, as you see what I just put there just a while ago, saying about the dynamic duo can't wait for next season man and uh ferrari wow what can we say about ferrari what can we say about ferrari one of the fans actually mentioned i think it was racer x said that ferrari is cooking with fred vasseur and i think he is cooking he ain't mincing his words he ain't messing about when it comes down to having the right driver although we wish it was still with carlos although we still see Carlos giving his dues, but when he gets the man that he really wants was Lewis, and he worked with him before, he knows what he's like, then obviously with Charles, yeah, he'll look forward to working with the best of the best. And with Ferrari, and you notice, ah, you got that's, that what, I, horse. that's I what I got. I see you. You can see it. I that's, see you. that's what I had from before. But I didn't want to make it be revealed because, yeah, I've actually liked the sign of Ferrari and I like the horse. So uh, now is Lewis going into that team? Yeah, I can't stop revealing that man. So it's yeah, that's spirit for me. <laughs> that's spirit for me. But as I said, the main thing is 2025. Can't wait to see that. But hats off to him for what he did this season. Shame on how things went with him for Total Wolf, but then again, right. with the name Wolf, you can't you can't always guarantee to be a perfect or, in fact, he's a nightmare, a werewolf. That's what I class him, right? And he is yeah, definitely in it. He's <laughs> definitely in the sheep's clothing because with Nikki, Nikki Lauda kept him under wraps. Nicky Lauda showed him exactly what is what. And as I said before, under the wolf then, it wasn't him that enticed Lewis. It was him that encouraged Lewis to make the decision. The same what Willie T said, Lewis is the only guy that can make his choice, his decision, and know where he's going to be at. He doesn't have to follow what is said unless his dad tell him. But when Lewis makes his mind, he knows what he goes for. 
and that's that with Toto and from what Nikki also saw Nikki is the one that keeps on telling Toto to make sure we keep this guy because he is who he is don't change him don't alter him don't even try and intimidate him don't even try and tell him what to do when he makes a decision that's a decision you go with the flow or you go with no go simple as and that's exactly what Lewis has done he go with the flow so why push the guy to make him try and stay with a car that does not work for him why push a guy to make it do something with a car that he knows is going to work for him but it's not doing exactly what he's done when he's on the track only till when you see he push that car that's a man and machine not machine and man so now that he actually got the choice he said it when they keep on questioning which i don't like how they keep questioning him what you gonna do when you get into ferrari what's it gonna be like when you get into ferrari how soon do you think you're gonna get into ferrari he said, wait, I'm actually finishing with the team that I love, a team that I've been with, the team that are my family, and I'm going to see it all the way to the end. And once I've done that, then I can move on. Simple as. Right. Right now, I need to rest, concentrate, look forward to the next year, and then see the new season and then work out the decisions and choices. Rather than making the decisions and choices right now, I'd rather do it when it's time. And that's how he says it. So... Leave him alone. Give right, the guy room. Lewis going to play it the right way. Lewis going to play it the, the integrity character way. That's what he does. That's what he That's does. That's how he should do it. It's like you're saying, if I said to you, change this up, do that up, do this, blah, 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 you going to tell me, no, bro, hold on. This is how my format works. This is how my format's going to stay. And if you don't appreciate, I'm not going to force you. Right. Unless you, you make sense, you I gotta I gotta consider. If you make a lot of sense, Uno, I gotta consider it. Take a look back, you know what I'm saying? We'll we we'll pay family saying some things to me. A lot a lot of a lot of y'all don't brought things to me. And I got like you know what I gotta consider that. You know, Mary uh, Mary Beanie, Maria Duncan for sure, Sylvia Wick Kelly, Galactus, you a lot of times y'all come when I was like, Okay, I'm gonna consider that. You know, that's what you do when you're in a that's family. A, no, that's, that's, you that's, you that's, might that's not change, decision. but sometimes you gotta consider it. Facts. There you go. That's how it does. But you don't put a pressure on a person. You don't you don't right. flip and well stand on their foot for how long until they go ouch. <laughs> right, 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 right. You don't right. do that. Correct. So you let the decision be on the person. If you like what we said, what we do to you and encourage you and inspire you, fine. That's the family. Right. Got your back. But you don't put a person, push them up front, and then what? Expect them to do the whole thing and you just step back and watch? No. Give Correct. the person that support and aid them. That's all it is. And that's all I'm saying. Right. All right. Else, man. Hey, appreciate you. Uno, Uno in here. We got DG Big Blue, Navy, Ura, but first we got a super chat. Big shout out to Jesse James Bell. Second package coming to Amazon. I really appreciate it, brother. We got some things where we're going to put up that uh, the Black Ace is, is sending here for center. So we'll probably put something up about right there. Racer X210 says Ferrari tacked on 246 extra points compared to last season, 406 to 652. So that is truly a solid step in the right direction. After Fred V first year as team principal, I'm ready to to see what my team does next year brother i can't hold you we got dg big blue coming in right now let's go man hey man okay. big shout out a hey, big shout out to everybody with heart you know what i'm saying to put a name to a face and put their words to a face because you got a lot of cowards out here that they like to talk a lot but do little or nothing you know what i'm saying what you got man what's up jay hey yeah, uh what's popping with you wonderful season this season uh way better than last watching max win 19 out of 24 races this was a good season. <laughs> that didn't happen right. But uh, I just want to talk about the Constructors Championships and how they ranked out and go up from starting from the bottom to the top. Okay. I like see, that. Let's go. And let's see what we think uh, will hold out for some of these teams. All right, let's, let's go. start with Sorry Ass Kit Saba. Even with Audi coming in, I think they're still going to be at the bottom. Okay. I think uh, Williams finishing at nine, they should have been much higher, but because of having to do a lot of rebuilding of cars that okay. really took it to, I don't think they're going to go any higher than this because I think the mm. money that they had to spend to fix the cars this year is going to eat into the cap from next year. Okay. Um, but we also know that, that they got R&D money that they're going to be able to use to build new facilities, so that won't cost to the cap. But uh, I really think they was hampered by uh, some real negligent driving out there from uh, 
from two of their drivers, Logan Sargent, let's be honest, and Calipinto mm. has some issues towards the end. Good driver, way better, way better than what Sargent was doing. Right, but right, those, right. But yeah, those he definitely mount up. True. You know, even the team principal was like, "Hey, you know, we gotta look at cutting back." And hopefully, with uh, <laughs> with um, Carlos Sainz getting in next year, they could they could definitely rank up there and become a solid mid uh, mid mid term uh, midfield team. Midfield mid team. Right? Okay. However, I don't like what's happening with the uh, the rules change. That's if if they do implement them with uh, team finishing higher than P six having to develop their own parts. Uh, mm. It will hurt customers' teams like uh, Haas, Haas. All right, well, let's go back to Red, Red, Red Bull v Cobb Racing or whatever. They, the they junior team. Eight. So they get to buy their parts from uh, from their sister team, Red Bull. Right. Which, again, them finishing eighth, it's not bad. They, they should have been higher. They should have been high. They, they were but projected they playing, to be. They, they, a lot of people, a, a lot of people had some hype behind them coming coming in. You know, they was gonna get the RB nineteen hand downs, or supposedly they were gonna be able to. You know, they were supposed to do better. So yeah. Right. Then we got seven, the so called quote unquote American team with foreign sponsors all the way around. <laughs> Facts. They just got a PO box in the U.S., bro. <laughs> right. right. You know, right there, South, uh, North, Carolina, North Carolina, right? Carolina, Charlotte, right. right. I think Haas this year greatly improved. They went up to seven, right? Yeah. I think it's only going to go up for them with Toyota Racing Development now on board. Okay. Um, I was like I was mentioning earlier about the rule change, how a team if they finish greater, higher than P six, they have to develop their own parts, and they can no longer become a uh, no longer a customer, right? I think that's going to affect teams like Haas, uh, it, because they don't, you know, they buy their parts from. Uh, uh, they buy the chassis from the, I forgot the Italian manufacturer, and they buy the engines from Ferrari. But if they continue to move up this way, they got to start seriously looking at developing their own in-house uh, party part systems, right? Right. Alpine, what can we say about Alpine? Uh, it's kind of mixed, ain't it? It's kind of I mean, it's kind of a little bit like, eh. huh? Yeah. Let's, let's see what they do with the Mercedes power unit. <laughs> Right, 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 right. You know, they're taking a step down from from a works team to a customer team. I think I will say this surprisingly toward the end of the season looked kind of like they hmm, look formative. What's, what's they going look on? What's going on? What's going on right here? Like what might be happening? But that, to me, that's a blip right now. You know, I yeah. got to see what happens next season. You feel me? So, yeah. And, you know, we only got a, a one race sample size with uh, doing. I, I, don't, I don't really like I didn't like his performance uh, Sunday. We'll, we'll I, see. Right, we'll see. You know, we'll first see. time out, you know, getting it in, coming right into Abu Dhabi. It was a – to me, Abu Dhabi was a good – I thought it was a good race. Right. I it think was. it had a good mix. It was a good race. You know, it some people can't drive worth shit in the first turn because, you know, they not used to people not giving them their way. But, you know, right. other than that, <laughs> it happens. Then on to my favorite team, who I like to clown all the time, Ashton Martin finishing fifth, who I said it would be. Or after when they started out hot back in the regulation change, I said this is just a hype. I said uh, this is a fluke. I, I I called it out several times, and I'm like they're gonna end up right back in the middle. And look where they at, right back in the middle. Now we'll see what they can do with the regulation change coming up in 2026. They got Adrian Newey. They got they got to be a worse team of Honda. They may be able to put the pieces together and make their way up that ladder. Maybe. And then uh, you know Mercedes ranking in fourth. You know. Uh, we'll we'll see how that work with uh, Kemi coming into the team. I I think this is where they're gonna be hanging out uh, next season as well. You got okay. a rookie driver, uh, you know, rookie driver with experience driver in Russell. I I think this is probably where they're gonna be at next year. I don't see them for I don't foresee them taking overtaking Red Bull, McLaren or Ferrari in the top three. I just don't. Not okay. Not with a rookie driver. Not not with a rookie driver and bitch ass Russell complaining all the time. Make sure that his visor is sweat free of sweat because he might think it's raining. Um, then we got Red Bull. I think they're about to stay where they at. They're no longer mm. gonna be the top in the top three. And then I think okay. the fight is gonna be taken to uh, McLaren with Ferrari. I think it's gonna be a classic '80s uh, oh. one season coming up here in 2025 right. with McLaren and Ferrari going at it. And I I can't wait. It's gonna be fantastic. 
All right, that's a bad DG Big Blue coming through with a loose list. That was different, brother. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Make sure you stay around for more commentary, though, for real. Yo, I like yeah. that, man. T let me know what y'all thought about that list in the live chat. I thought that was pretty good. I thought that was pretty good. Some questions out there. I'm definitely going to give. I'm definitely going to give. I did. Jack is, you know, I'm going to let him slide on his first time. But I think that it's a definitely a better driver pairing. Like, you know, I think Jack and Gasly are going to be a better driver's pairing. That's one less thing that Alpine will have to worry about. Two drivers that have a deep-rooted quarrel with each other and really don't get along. I think that cohesiveness within the team between the drivers is something that at least will, it will be a positive. So Ocon, although I like him as a driver, driving hard, elbows wide, doesn't matter who you are. In this situation, either either it was Gasly going or Ocon going, it was still to me addition by subtraction. Uh, we got Kenny B, Kenny B coming in next. Then we got Baraka after him. Kenny B about to cook. He said, "I ain't scared. Let's go. Let's go, <laughs> Kenny Bud. Let's, let's get it. Look here, man. Bone crusher. Let's go. <laughs> I got a couple of different topics, so right. I'm, I'm gonna list them. I'm gonna let you pick them. Okay. Okay. Let's. That's a bit. You got the situation with Red Bull. Adrian Newey leaving okay. and Aston Martin. Okay. That's a real sticky topic because okay. Aston Martin thought that they were doing something when they took one of the race engineers from Red Bull. And then when they mm -hmm. made the changes that they made, what was it last year? They made that big jump. It was because they copied the Red Bull car. Roger that. And then the, pro the problem behind that was, okay, you did that, you made the jump, but you didn't truly understand what you were looking at in that car. So when it came to making improvements, every improvement you made went yeah, backwards. Yeah. That's, that okay? Point. Well, you got Red Bull going through the same thing now that they don't have Nui. And Ooh. the engineers that they still have there, they made changes. Ooh. They're going backwards. Damn, okay, that's so that's solid. the one topic. It's a solid connection. All right, what's the next one? Okay, the other topic is whether or not Ferrari made a mistake by going after Lewis. Mm. Okay, it's a good topic. Okay, but the thing is, the day after that was announced, Ferrari stock went increased Crazy. by six billion dollars their uh their stock capital increased by six billion dollars and now the reports are out that mercedes is bitching because some of the, the sponsors are following lewis okay we'll, we'll get to that we'll get to right, that right right they dip it the third topic and this okay. is the one that really gets me people questioning whether lewis still has it or not and one of the reasons why they feel the courage to be able to say that or the license to be able to say that is because Lewis is self-reflective. He's not trying to blame the team for all of the failings of that car, even though, yeah, it is the car that's causing all the problems. But one of the, it's more complicated than that. It's the car and it's the regulations. Changing to the new regulations, driving, changing your driving style to match the, the regulations that we have right now is a big change to the brain. Okay, because it, it feels totally different. The one thing that Lewis has shown all his career, every year he goes, goes on vacation and comes back and he's improved something. He's fixed something that he saw as a problem. So I don't know where to get that from. But okay, I think that should be the topic that I talk about. Okay. This is the thing. When you got a car that is so hard to set up, that it's got such a tight window, setup window, that if it's not just right, it's all over the place. And even Russell has said this too, right? This is the problem with that whole statement. And, and it's really true, but this is the problem with it. Only one person seems to be having problems with that with that car setup on such a regular, consistent basis. But the thing about it is, he can come in the first day 
and and be on rails and then the next day the car is all over the place the window the operating window for that car is so tight a screw here a turn there it don't take much to take it out of the operating window to screw up one driver over another and you never see it happen to russell but you always see it happen to lewis okay so that's one side of that story the other side of that story is when you have a car that inconsistent this is all about how people's brains react to what they feel okay some guys can make changes on how their brain reacts in split second moments okay they focus on it in the off season perez is a perfect example of this perez is actually a good driver he can't handle this regulation car not because it it's totally the regulation some of it has to do with the way they design the car more towards max's driving style okay so that's a perfect example there he I, and i don't know why he fought so hard to stay at red bull if he had a shot to go someplace else because bro. it's a losing cause dude bro thank you kenny b he made right. himself look like a total idiot right but anyway this this ain't this ain't this ain't about perez this is about lewis okay so what we got here is someone who's self-conscious willing to make the changes in his driving style to a certain degree okay but these regulations really don't match his style and if they keep introducing these small quirks into the car like for the last five four, four or five races his spec has been different from from russell's and he finally came out and said it the, t the two cars are different okay someone who drives on rails on the edge all the time never makes mistakes this is what all the other drivers always said about lewis right all of a sudden you start introducing all these little quirks that make the rear end slide out here which make him lose grip in the front understeer there all this and all that it becomes aggravating to a person who wants perfection one example look at how max talked when his car ain't just right right he he'd be, a fucking fool. he be up there crying <laughs> oh no he just go after the engineers and the mechanics right. on the radio he, he's relentless he just attacks attacks he's like the donald trump of racing anyway facts <laughs> yeah Anytime somebody comes at you, attack. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, let's just call it what it is. But that's what's that's the combination of things that's going on with Lewis. These regular with the regulations and with the team not being able to produce the car that they should that he's worthy of, and somebody fucking with his car. I, don't, I mean, I ain't saying that it's Toto implementing this it could be a single person who's just mad that he's leaving who knows but somebody's making some tweaks on that car to fuck with it because there's no way your car should change from friday to saturday the way it is Bro, the way it has been about. that's right. just crazy from q2 to q3 but they know that, about that right but they know that doing that to lewis is enough to throw him off his game okay and they got the first hint of that from Rossberg in 2016 when he's changed his driving style and started pushing Lewis all over the track and crashing it, running him off the track and crashing and all that old crazy shit. Opened the door for him to sneak in there and win the championship because he couldn't win it any other way. Okay, and Lewis vowed not to let that happen again. But it did happen in 2021 because it took him a while before he woke up to Max doing all the shit he was doing on track and say, hey, look, I'm not taking this shit no more. Mm -hmm. And he stood his ground. He didn't put Max into the wall in Silverstone. Max put himself into Self the fucking in that situation. Wall. Right. Okay. But anyway, they know that if if they introduce enough variables into his drive into his car, 
they can make him look incompetent. And that's what the goal is. The thing is, when he gets to Ferrari, they are so desperate to win, they're, they're going to give him consistency. Even if it's not the fastest car on the track, he's going to have consistency. He's going to work it out. And that's what makes him dangerous. And that's why everybody's trying to do everything they can to sully his name, make him look incompetent, make him look like he's lost his skills. The one thing about that is, whenever he gets a car that he can drive, he does like what he did this weekend, go from 16 to 4. In the fourth fastest car. Facts. Facts. Okay? And it's not so, the first time we've seen it. For all y'all who questioning whether or not Lewis has lost it, strap in. But <laughs> strap in. Because this is the last year. Strap in because this is the last year of this regulation. And and the, the cars at the top are all so close together. This is the thing. We can we can admit Red Bull is not going to be in the top two fastest yeah. cars next year because they don't have the right engineers to make it happen. We know that much, okay? We know that Aston Martin is not going to be in the top four because Adrian Newing can't can't come can't get involved until March. Is it March or May? Uh, I don't know which it is, but I know it's around there. I think it's, it's, it's May. It's March or May. I think one it's of those yes, two, one of those I think it's months. May. Right. It doesn't matter. That's the bottom line issue. So he's not focused on that car. He's going to start helping them once he does come on board, get things right because that car is his design. So he'll help them get it, start moving forward instead of moving backwards during the season. But his main goal is there is to be there for 2026. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line issue. True. Okay. He can't help the 2025, but so much. Right. All right. So you don't have to worry about him. McLaren's going to be there because the yeah. one thing McLaren showed is when they made corrections to changes in midseason to their car, not only did it pan out last year, but every upgrade kept moving them further and further forward. So right. they understand the concept of their car aerodynamically. So we know they're going to be there. Ferrari. It's a pretty good chance that they're going to be in the top two. Definitely the top three, but they're going to be in the top two. Yeah, I feel confident for sure. No matter who's, who, no, even if, even if science was there, okay. But with Lewis there, that's a, that's a, that's another that's another stimulus. Like Bono said, Lewis is going to play with those controls on the steering wheel all throughout practice and find all kinds of little tricks on how he can get better performance out of that car. Watch what I say. I got you. I got you, Kenny B. We about to let we about to let Baraka cook for a second. Kenny B came on here cooking on y'all. Hey man, Kenny B brought up some very good points. And I'm looking for, I do feel very confident that it's gonna be Ferrari McLaren. And and I would say I'm I'm still gonna say Red Bull's gonna be somewhere in there. Top three. I could maybe, but it's gonna be listen, if you look at the, I mean, the numbers don't lie, okay? Max Verstappen's back half of the season was not a championship winning season he's very fortunate that he was able to front load that okay numbers don't lie that's not that's not going to be a championship winning season if you're doing that all season with everybody else taking race it's just not going to happen so yeah he got the front load but that is what it is i mean he did what he was supposed to do with the car that he had he he was consistent max doesn't make a lot of errors in that way but he can't drive wheel to wheel great and he doesn't drive well when it's in the midst of other competitors like piastri like lewis Lando lets him through like a door, man. Russell seems like he's going to fight him. I'm going to let Baraka come in, our resident Red Bull expert. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what Baraka got popping. What you got, Baraka? What's up, brother? Um, So on the topic of Red Bull, it's not even about Max. I think I think everyone knows that Max pretty much papered over the cracks on how that car, that car was like, especially in the back half. He papered, like, yeah, he wasn't w winning, but he was still putting it in high enough positions to get enough points. That said and done, that's his talent. Red Bull are at this point lucky to have him, because again, if we take it back to what twenty fourteen when he I can't remember what year when he got into when he was seventeen. Yeah, it was 
pretty much Horner and Toto trying to, you know. I want to say it was get, 2015. 15. Horner, pretty much Horner and Toto were trying to, like, hey, try to entice yeah, they him were to get to this. back sheet. and forth, right. And then I think Horner won it because he yeah. told him he would go ahead and put him in. Exactly. To, right. Toro Rosso at that point in time, I believe. So now we're looking at, speaking about Alpha Tower or Toro Rosso at the time, formerly, also formerly known as Minardi, we're looking at V-Card. Uh, they got two drivers that are, I believe, have a chance on making that second seat at Red Bull theirs. Now, hypothetically speaking, let's say, because Checo said it before, he has a contract for next year with Red Bull. I don't, I'm not mad at Checo for saying that. No one should be mad. It's true. He has a, he has a contract with Red Bull for next year. Hypothetically speaking, for him to lose that seat, they have to buy him out that contract. So let's let's talk about it. Hypothetically okay. speaking, you know, I uh earlier in the week I was gun ho Yuki should Yuki should no no matter what Lawson doesn't deserve it, but then I I took a step back, took off my my rose into glasses for a minute and said, <laughs> I I can't lie. Okay. Yuki or Lawson, they both have a fighting chance or have a has a has a conversation on why they should be in that Red Bull second seat. Okay, now, I, want, I want to hear the. I want to hear. I want to okay. hear a brief portion yeah. of the conversation for both. Yes. So okay. If, okay. So we're we're gonna start with the safe option, which okay. is obviously Yuki. Uh, it's his fourth season, so he's he's gotten that experience in right. the Formula One car, and throughout in all those four seasons, you could say that each season he's matured a bit more. The Yuki okay. that we know now. And the Yuki in 2021 are vastly different Yukis. Yeah, that 2021 Yuki would show itself every now and then. Kind of showed itself if you if you're watching the race uh, <laughs> yesterday. You know he was very like oh he's very passionate. Pit? Yeah, he was very, he's very passionate, which is a good thing. I think True. it's a very good thing. And then also he for every with every teammate he's been giving, he's outperformed them. True. He's outperformed. We look at. You know, Nick DeVries. Nick DeVries. Hey, Danny I thought Rick. Danny Rick. Um, at at some point, Pierre Gasly was, he was getting a run for his money with yeah. Yuki, especially. Uh, I think it was he was with his teammates with Yuki for two years, I believe. Pierre, and I think first year, I, of course, Gasly had the, had had that sweat, but as again, Um, as you know, the season went on. I almost blanked for a minute. As the season went on, Yuki started to show us like he may be that guy. Now to Lawson, he's the riskier option. And I say, and it, it, it is risky for you know Horner to give Lawson the seat because at the end of the day, it's Horner's final decision on who gets that Red Bull second seat. People talk about yeah, Marco. Yes, Helmet Marco. He's more. Yeah, he can be critical of Yuki, but he's also on the def- he he's on the defense of Yuki too. And f- if the reports are true, Horner and Marco are not seeing eye to eye in terms of who gets that Red Bull seat. They're not seeing eye to eye from what I'm what the rumors are saying. Okay, that yeah yeah we've been Mar- hearing rumbles of that. Yeah, Marco said time. Marco was like, let's give Yuki a chance, and Horner's like, no, let's give Lawson a chance. Now for Lawson, riskier option, but. He he's won his first race at DTM uh, touring uh, German touring championship. He's won his first race at uh, Super Formula. Uh, if you paid attention, I, that's, that was the reason why I stayed up in ungodly hours in the morning to see a, a race all the way in Japan. He did well. Uh, he done well. He, I think I believe he won his first race in F two when he uh, made his F two debut. So he's shown something in the junior categories and in F one. Yes, he's 0 and 6 compared to Yuki, but the context in that him not out qualifying Yuki has not is not being discussed cuz I have the times here. Okay. It's the gap between him and Yuki is no is no more or actually no more than like a tenth or two two tenths at most most weekends. Spirit quality, okay, I'm not going to throw in spirit quality cuz I know Lawson has I think Lawson Okay, I'll I'll go through the races actually. All right. So sprint qualifying for Yuki Sonoda, he uh, in SQ three he got a mi- one minute thirty three seconds point eight oh two, got him ninth. Lawson uh, made it to uh, SQ two, but 
I think he crashed, if I can remember. Uh, he Or he did not finish. Qualifying, and he got in 15. Uh, Q1, uh, and Q, uh, actually in Q2, he got a 1 minute 33 second and 506 for Yuki. And he crashed in, S, uh, in um, Q2 in US. And that gave him 15th. So I'm the US GP who's getting his feet wet. Mexico right. GP, uh Q Q two for Yuki, one minute seventeen second, point one twenty nine for Yuki, and then for Lawson, one minute seventeen seconds, point one six two. That's pretty close. Got him twelfth. So he's a he was a position behind. Uh SQ SQ uh one at Brazil. Oddest qualifying I've seen in a while. Uh Yuki didn't really do well. He only uh got eighteenth. While for Lawson, he got to SQ3 for an 8th place spot uh, for Sprint. And he got a 5th place spot in the race. I think a 5th place spot in the race. And Yuki, I I, I wish I was watching uh, Sprint, not Sprint quality, but the main race qualifying live review. I would have been blowing up your your <laughs> the chat saying, Yuki, Yuki, Q, P3, Yuki, P3. Right. I was a... <laughs> right. Uh, for Vegas, Vegas was an odd one. Uh, even though Yuki started the race at seventh, Lawson started at fifteenth. Um, Qatar, Lawson out qualified in the sprint, got a tenth place uh spot to start the race for the sprint, while Yuki got seventeenth. But during the race, Lawson was seventeenth, while Yuki was fourteenth. And then for Abu Dhabi, Yuki got eleventh, while Lawson got twelfth. So for Horner's case, mind you, he had no testing with this car. He just, they just he dumped him it. into the deep right, end. Right, he and it. he's shown in, in qualifying, he's shown it's like, you can get pretty close by 10th to compared to um, Sergio, who is, who's getting knocked out in Q1 while Max is dragging that car to Q3 a lot. So Horner's like, okay, yeah, why not Lawson? He's, he's shown that he's, can qualify pretty good, get close to his teammate. Unlike okay. the play, the driver we actually employ, he can't even sniff a fifth place spot while Max is getting fourth or third in qualifying. So, th- those are the two options. So, I'm not gonna say there's no wrong answer. It's right. just which is the, there's the safe bet and the most riskier bet. Okay. Of course, Yuki is your safe. He's shown it throughout his career in F1 so far, and you got Lawson. Who's shown it in this six? I know it's six races, not enough. Small but sample size, right? A small enough sample size, and then also if you look back in his Super Formula, his F2, and his DTM, he mm-hmm. almost won DTM. He nearly won Super Formula. He did pretty all right in F2, so it's like okay, we're factoring those in. I say that Lawson has a fighter's chance. If I was running the team, of course, biases aside, I'll still go with Yuki because he, again, he's a safer bet. He's shown that he can outqualify, he can outperform okay. his teammates. But I wouldn't be too, as, I wouldn't be too frustrated. I'll be more understandable if Horner said, no, Marco is my team at the end of the day. We're getting lost. In. Okay. So this is what I will say on, in, in response to that. This is what yeah. I will say. I think we've been here before, though, right? Uh, we, we've we? been here, but we've we've been here before. We've been here before, right? We've we've been here before with the the smaller sample sizes or no sample size at all. Drivers mm-hmm. come in. Think about it. everything. Nick DeVries hadn't even made it to the team yet. He was the yeah. number one driver he was an, before yeah, he, was he the even one got driver, to the yeah. team. Nick DeVries is our number. And before we get that, Jesse James Bell says Red Bull without cheats and Adrian will be a midfield car in 2025 and with show. Uh, his true colors with two asterisks with his championship. Got you, Jesse James Bell. So let me let me finish responding to this. Yeah. So Nick DeVries, before he get here, he number one driver. Nick DeVries, gone before the season. It's over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then Danny Rick, he, 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 he getting his mojo back. He's coming back so that he can just show them what he's worth. Christian Horner believes he's worth. He's going to check Perez. You know, you think you're going to do what, negotiate with us? No, we got – Danny Rick to check you and you going to school Yuki. Did he, did he mm-hmm. also, mm-hmm. yeah, he, he fell right the hell off too. He got the hell on. Yeah. Then, then who else did we have? We had, um, 
there was somebody else that came in real quick and then dipped out. We already had Gasly, but Gasly, I, I really don't. Gasly was straight to me. Yeah. Gasly was there, and then now we got Lim coming in. He came in, came out, but I think Lim to me has shown, like you said, in the sample size that it looks good, right? We don't really know until he gets in there. But now that exactly. it's Lim, all of a sudden, Lim gets this consideration for the seat while Yuki's been through several drivers, outperforming them, whether it's two tenths, four tenths, or points. And how do you not consider this man for a seat in the Red Bull? Now, he's, that's... The easy, I can, again, it's the, easy, the easiest answer is... One guy within that Red Bull program says, why not give Yugi a shot? While the main guy, your team principal, say, no, why not Liam? Horner wants Liam. I think it's right. clear as day. It's probably the most obvious. Horner wants Liam. Yes, Marco, he's, again, Marco is very critical. But he's very critical on almost every Red Bull driver under him. Like, he will he'll give you his, he will give you your flowers one day. And then call you an idiot the next day if you do something. Right. Stupid. That's just that's just Marco. I've just accepted that. I'm, but Marco. Right, right, it right. seems like Marco is like, he's edg edging more towards Yuki in a way. He, of course, he support again. Okay, Lost. He's supportive of Lawson too because he's also under him. Right. 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 But I I, yeah. I I will I'll say this. I said this is what I said. I said that, and this is where my case was going to be definite. If Liam Lawson came in. The time that he came in, he outperformed Yuki. I was gonna say Yuki, you kind of, bro, it's that it ain't looking good for you. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm here with you, but damn, it's kind of hard a brother come in with less mm -hmm. time and do better. But that didn't happen, you know. That didn't, that did not happen. What happened was Yuki held his own, and what was Yuki? Twelfth, while Lim Lawson probably finished. I think he finished twenty first outside of t the twenty. Yeah, I think, I think he so, finished yeah. outside of twenty. So, I, I, I'm with this. Give Yuki the shot. I mean, it's it's no secret Red Bull have done this before. A driver gets in there, they don't like how he's performing. Okay, then, hey, Yuki, you had your shot, bro. You got to shift down and we bring it up, and that's what it is. I would prefer to see that than just see Lim Lawson get the seat and then not know. Yeah, same here. That, I, I, I but I will say this. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think, but I don't know, Lim Lawson don't seem like a yes man. And... Yeah. Yeah, he's he's very again. I think he's 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 as passionate as actually he's as passionate as Yuki and yes, Max. Yes, for like, sure. He was he literally. If it wasn't for if it wasn't for the Red Bull connection, I feel like he was gonna fight Checo after the Mexican Grand Prix. For sure, for sure. I like what that. I and I would watch that one. I would pay to watch that. By right. The way. <laughs> I just feel like he's not gonna care about this Max seniority, this Perez seniority. He's like, no, I'm here to drive and be the best version of me. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, I like that about him, but I also think that about Yuki. Only thing is, I think Yuki is a bit more somebody who they're like, man, we don't know if Yuki going to listen to us over this radio. Liam Lawson seemed like he'll take that order. Yuki don't seem like he might, he might not take that order, bro. He and, I feel, and, to, and I think in response to that, because look, Yuki... And Yuki has every right to act that way. He's been in the sport for four years. Yeah. Liam has been, uh, he's been in the sport for six races. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 like, right, right. Uh, of six. course he's going to, uh, there's, and, I feel, and again, now this is the athlete, the athlete side of me is talking. They're going to have yeah. an ego. If you're if an athlete with no ego, you either, you're very, very talented and you're humble in a way, or you're yeah. just trying to, or you're very delusional or something. That's it. Right, 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 right. That's true. So yeah, there's right. gonna be they're gonna Yuki should have an ego if he goes to that. Relationship. He should, Facts. and he should. they should expect that. And I feel like they should expect that with Liam, Liam, because we have a six race sample size, yeah. which he has shown his ego. Yeah, he does show he got some Mexican, dog in him, bro. He, he does show he got dog, some dog in him. He got some dog in him. Yeah. It, <laughs> damn. Damn. <laughs> he got some dog in him. So but, yeah, um, definitely. I, I, again, if I'm running Red Bull, if I was if. If I woke up in Christian Horner's body for one day, I would personally give Yuki the seat, give him a good enough window for him, because of course there's there's going to be an adjusted period, adjustment pyramid, right. uh, period. And if it works out, keep him. If it doesn't, we got to and if and, and if if Liam does well okay. while Yuki's with with the main team, and Yuki doesn't do well, we'll just do the typical Red Bull thing and just. You know, do Just, a little swap. Right. Bring that, you that, down it, and bring this up. That happens. Yeah, it happens. So, again, I, that's why I say it's like there's no quote-unquote wrong answer. It's just which one is this. You just got the safe one. 
that you could probably rely on more and the risky one which is going to be a huge gamble and a, I think a yeah. big investment too and I'm guessing for Horner he's factoring Honda I think with Yuki is the mm, Honda factor the after next Honda season connection. they're jumping ship to Aston Martin they jump in right exactly they go so, Aston Horner is looking like what's the point of giving him a seat if Honda's going to jump if ship gonna be and they're going to try anyway. to entice him to go race with them so I think okay. that's where Horner is coming from okay. but from what Yuki has been expressing, he wants to be in that seat. With or without Honda. I think with or without Honda in a way. He'll, I, if I they, think, I, yeah, I, 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 could, I could agree with that. So, I could agree with that. It, there's a lot of factors in play with this whole situation. It's very political. Uh, this seat has been very yeah, political. Yeah, it's a lot of political. It, it's, it's a lot of po- backstage politics that we don't know about. We're just don't getting, exist in the sport. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they need lame old say don't exist in the sport, right? <laughs> There's a lot of backstage politics going on that we may that we we know at least five percent out of True. the entire one hundred. I agree. True. And I've just again I've listened to what the five percent that we were given. Right. Just to so get we don't some know the ninety five percent that actually goes on. So. True. That's right. That's right. Until it so, just comes out. Yeah. So that's my rep. That's the that's the case for the second seat. Checo. Okay. He should be an ambassador. I think his time in F one is done. I, yeah. I I know Kenny B, Kenny B is like, oh he's a great driver and all that. I think, but with this with the with the options that are available right now. There you go. Okay, there you go. Right with the options he could out be there. A, he's gonna. I think he should follow the Danny Rick route. Be an ambassador, and then if a seat opens up, take it. Yeah. Danny did but with. But uh, don't do don't don't do it what Danny did. Uh, the, well, and, and, okay, in, in terms of. Not performance, but how yeah. he got back into it. Well, how he got back in, right. How he got back. <laughs> right. Go do some uh, Yeti commercials. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. you know, I got you. You know, he got the South American crowd, uh, the, right. Latin, Latin, the Latin American right, crowd. Right, South American, right. What the hell? So, God you know, damn, come on. Uh, Hell of Barco is from Mexico. What the yeah. hell? Hell of Barco <laughs> with that bullshit. <laughs> hey, appreciate then, you, Morocco. What no you got? No problem, no problem. And then also, uh, is anyone next, by the way? Or is it just... Let me see, let me see, let me see. Nah, you got it. You got it, you got it, you got it. Haas. I'm excited for what next year is going to bring. As a resident Toyota guy, I know they're not bringing an engine. They're going to be a technical partner with Haas. And if... I don't know who said it about the regs and if you finish a certain place below six, you have to make your own parts. No, I think think Kenny B says six and above. Six and above, you're... You could... You have to make your own part six and yeah, above? something like that. So we just bust it. Okay. So if that's the case, and let's say hypothetically speaking, we finish six. We got a partner in Toyota that could, you know, they, if you look at, if you hear what they do with their endurance team and their rally team and how they test, develop their own parts, Haas just struck a gold mine. Yeah, that, I mean, it, it sounds good. It sounds good. It sounds now, good. A, and then also with Cadillac now being official, let's be uh, let's be real. It's Andretti. They, yeah, yeah. Any, they any, anyone anyone that was in that Andretti deal is with this Cadillac deal. It is Cadillac with Andretti marketing. Right. It's going. It's GM Cadillac. It's with GM. Andretti just mixed in. Yes. Mixed in. Right. Right. They it, found it, a way. It's, it's, they found a Andretti way to F1. surrogate. They found a good surrogate way. Yeah. Michael and Mario Andretti Business. found a way to get in the F1. Finally. Uh, I like. It. I love it. I 100% love it, and I will be rooting for them. I All want right. them to be the best team in the, on the grid. I, if it's not if it's not Toyota Haas Gazoo Racing Money Gram F1 team, yeah. I, wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to be Cadillac. I feel you. I feel you on that. If it's not Cadillac, <laughs> then I'm just here for the vibes. Okay, gotcha. You <laughs> just here for the vibes. Get, so you're I'm not going. For, you're I'm, not going to revert back to the Red Bull. Uh. I'm 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 more with Max mainly, but okay. So if, if Max is doing if if Max is doing well, yeah, I'm happy. But in terms okay. of team wise, you you wear Haas because of Toyota because you did with say Haas that with Toyota, Toyota ever came. Yes, in Toyota sport, comes you back, said you was going to be, be with them. All and right, then and with Andretti coming in, and with GM. Andretti coming in, GM is like, okay, I'll I'll be there as your second right. team. I, again, I'm. It's not by choice. It's by circumstance with Ferrari. I don't want to support okay. Ferrari, but but they're pairing my. Toyota team in Haas, okay. so I was like, I hope they get their engine right next year. Because if they don't, we're screwed. <laughs> so, 
Right. All right. That's a bit. Baraka yeah. in. Appreciate you, brother, man, for that case, that case study. We got Uno. Uno, I'm going to let Kenny B back door the session. I'm going to let Kenny B close out. Uno, I'm going to give you each five minutes. Uno, you are up, brother. What you got to say, my brother, man? Uno, you in. Tap in, bro. Yep. What's up? Yeah. Go ahead, I bro. Just kinda, I just kind of want to say about, like, the hats what um, Baraka just hit on as well because, uh, yeah, they look they look fiery, man. They look really fiery. And yeah, plus, they did. Turn although up. Hulk, I think he did messed up. Then he crashed, just crashed out, and then um, Mag Magnuson also did the same, didn't they? They were doing quite well, really doing quite well. But the only problem is now, I think, if Gene has can absolutely well as those two are going to different driving ships or whatever, I feel that Gene, like you said, now should definitely get the kind of nascar guys you should start getting concentrate and bring them in even if they have not got the uh the, the um, formula one license they can it's, it should do that start putting them into the program and bring them in to make sure that they can also represent his team because he's got good drivers in the nascar not just only with andretti andretti's got well-known names even the foreign guys but he's got well-known he's got well-known but Gene, he should absolutely now concentrate and bring his guys. Because there are so many in that team of his. But he should start doing like a, a program on them to get the F1 license and start putting them into this F1 format so that they can get the experience as well and know exactly how good they are. And that's what he should have done. So that's what I want to say. If, he, if he's going to keep this going, and they're looking quite good. Yeah, I think they nearly got the P6, didn't they? Mm -hmm. That's good. So he should now concentrate and carry on because who is it? I I O I O did a great job, man. I, and a lot of people were dissing that um that Japanese guy, but look what he done. Yeah, he turned it around. Look what he done. Yeah, he turned it around. That's it. it. Gunther, I don't mind, but Gunther did a but, good job, but not as not strong like as it. this guy right, who right. knows his homework. And look what right. happened. Bam. Yeah. True. So now Gene better start turning the table around and do exactly what what we're suggesting and bring in these guys in America from his American side of the NASCAR into the program and then he's cooking. So Bet. we'll see. All right, appreciate you, Uno, brother man. We got Kenny B right here about to bring it down. Let's go, Kenny Bucks. Let's make it happen, bro. What you got? <laughs> what you got? So listen, okay. First of all. Has anybody paid attention to the fact that there are so many rookies coming in and doing well and why they might be doing so well? Mm, speak on it, bro. Come on, speak on it. When you, back in the day, drivers didn't just drive Formula One. They drove Formula One, they drove IndyCar, they drove, they drove GT, mm -hmm. they drove World Endurance. They did it all, okay? And the advantage that they gave them is they could not focus their brains on just one driving style. They had to be able to change their driving style to meet the series that they were racing in. And it always kept them on edge. All right. <clears throat> and what has happened is the same thing that's happened in the real business world. Everybody has started specializing in one area and becoming an expert in that one thing. Okay. And that's what's happened to Formula One. And because of that, what has happened is drivers have become, their driving styles have, have gained tunnel vision, focused on one driving style just for that series. Okay, and when you bring a big change in, like a change in the regulations, most of these drivers can't handle that kind of change because they just don't have the brain capacity to be able to make that change because these changes are split second changes to in the decision making for the drivers. Right. Okay. To be able to turn that into performance, you know, these changes, it's not an easy thing to do. Lewis has been doing it all his career. So I'm confident he can do it. Alonzo can do it. No right. offense or buts about it. Okay. All these other guys. They haven't spent the amount of time in Formula One to get so focused and so zoned in on this driving style that when this regulation came in, 
a lot of them can handle that change. The younger drivers can. Well, now you've got these Formula 2 drivers coming in, coming, stepping up, and there's no change for them to make in their head. The only change they're making is a change in speed and a change in downforce. Okay, so that gives them an advantage over the veteran drivers who are fighting their old habits. And that's what we're talking about here, habits. Yeah, we talked okay. about that before, right? We, exactly. So that's why you got so many young drivers who are doing well and getting these seats. All right. The, the problem is they don't have the experience and that's why they crash. Okay. Mm. But past that, you've got a situation. And, and, and I want to go to some of the things that these guys have been saying, like, um, Lando. First of all, Lando's a fanboy. <laughs> He's a Max Verstappen fanboy. And for years, for years, I was like, what the fuck? Why do they just let this dude come past them by with no challenge? Then he came out and said that thing about Lewis. Well, of course he's fast. He's in the fastest car. He's supposed to win. Okay, you're in the fastest car now. What's the problem? Right. Oh, it ain't as easy as you thought it was. Huh. Right. But the real thing is, you Max's bitch. Hmm? He done brain fucked you to hell. And you bit all that shit. You've been biting it for years, and now when you finally get a chance to challenge him, you ain't, you can't step up to the plate. It's not that he's soft, he got brain fucked. <laughs> That's what really happened to him. Right. He got played. Oh, man. He got played for all his marbles, for all his cookies, left him with crumbs. Oh, my God. Hopefully next year he will have learned from this. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. <laughs> maybe he did. <laughs> oh Who knows? Oh, my gosh. Right. Okay? Uh, but what Haas did was some genius shit. The genius move wasn't the deal with Toyota. The genius deal, and I hate to say it like this because Gunther was good for Haas. But he was also bad for us. He was focused on the wrong things, and and this Japanese dude, he's killing them. For sure. He's killing them. Okay, so first he went to the engineering aspect of the car and said, okay, we need to make fundamental changes that are going to give us consistency. Consistent, a consistent level of progression is what the drivers need to be able to maximize the car. Okay, because if, you, if you're not consistently moving forward, correcting problems with the car, how is a driver supposed to get enough confidence to know that that car is not, is not going to do certain things when he's exiting a corner or when he's going into a corner? Good point. Okay, he gave them that consistency. And then Hulkenberg, and anybody questioning why he's so much faster than Magnuson after oh. going to GT mm. because that's why oh. it's like he's stepping back into it. Look, Haltenberg had the talent, but he hadn't, he's never won a race. No, as a matter of fact, I don't even think he's got a podium. He's got what one podium from no. when he was young or something? Yeah, something bro, like I don't that? think he got one. I think we had one over the weekend. I don't think he has one. Right, but all of a sudden he's looking like the man out here, right? Right. He looked like the man, homie. <laughs> right. <laughs> Two things. His stint away from Formula One and having you drive in different series and, and being able to unprogram bad habits. Okay? okay. And when you get the, the next chance, now it's a totally do, new regulation. You stepping back into it. You don't bring your bad habits that you had before with you. Which were they were small, little small tiny things that right, left right. him behind the other drivers, but he's able to start new like he's a rookie in his brain. In his brain. Good point. You see what I'm saying? Fair point. So that's why he was so much better than Magnuson. All right. 
You get when you get when you're driving these twitchy cars, you get to a point where you expect these glitches going in and out of the turns, and you back off a little bit to try and compensate for that. And all of a sudden, you start getting a car that's more consistent. Well, it takes you a while to get back on the edge. You see what I'm saying? So that's what's going on with them. But that's what makes the deal with Toyota damn near criminal because <laughs> they get the Ferrari engine, they get the Ferrari suspension, rear suspension. Right. And they get all of this engineering expertise from Toyota without the headaches of Toyota trying to tell them what to do. Yeah. And they get to use Toyota's wind tunnel wind and facilities. Tunnel? Bro. Yeah, it's that's a right. killer it's move, looking, dude. It's looking right. It's looking It's nice. looking good for them. <laughs> it's looking, it's looking nice. good for them. It's looking good for them. Okay. It is. It is. But finally, what you got? This is the real master class. The real master class. This is why everybody hates Lewis so much. One of the reasons why. There's a good chance Lewis is going to be one of the sponsors on the Formula One car with his new tequila. Mmm, damn, bro. <coughs> That'd and, be crazy. And Puma and Hilfiger and some of the other sponsors are sticking with him because he makes them that much money. Okay, yeah. so that's oh. the real deal with his move to Ferrari. They can't afford to let him fail because financially, it's a windfall for him, it's a windfall for Ferrari, and it's a windfall for Formula One. I keep telling everybody drives to five, is not the reason Formula One got so popular. It's Lewis. Yeah. And now y'all gonna find that out next year. Because that, I, that swing that, gonna be crazy. You know? <laughs> because in 2026, now you got a new regulation. And then that's my final subject, the new regulation. Go ahead, hit on it. What's your thoughts on the new regulation? I think when new regulations hit, bro. I like it because it's usually a shuffle for the first part, right? Because of the car. Because of the car, right? Because of the car, so it's going to be a shuffle. You're forgetting the driver aspect but of it. No, that's what I'm about they to bring in. That, the, that's, yeah. that's what I'm about to bring in. But the drivers, you get to see for a moment in time until they get all the cars on together, you get to see the drivers who really can adapt and adjust to the damn chaos that's going on while everybody's but trying to get a handle on that. That's because Lewis spends the offseason thinking about Duncan, the changes about that, that he that needs shit. to make in his driving style. Right, right, right. And that's what I like to see. Okay. But let's just talk about the cars. There's two things that's going to make it help. Well, actually, there's three things. There's the arrow, but I don't want to talk about the arrow because okay. it's active arrow, and that's a whole nother ball game. Right. Some going to get it right, some are not, whatever. But the two things that are going to make the big difference other than the arrow and the driver, the ice and the electronics, right? The electronics Ferrari is going to get the advantage on the ice. You know why? Tell me. You got no idea, do you? No, besides for the fact that they've been developing this type of technology in their production cars, what you got? Nah. Do you remember when they got caught cheating? Oh, shit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, they got caught cheating you, for that fuel mapping. Do you remember what the resolution was on that? Uh, was it the sensor? Nah. They were bypassing fuel. They were, yeah, they were bypassing fuel. Yeah, bro, they the were bypassing pump. the right. So they could yeah. get the increased With right. With extra hoses. The so that, yeah. So that it would look like they're not over ex exceeding the fuel pump. Uh, um, specs and all of that, but that's why they came up with the two fuel pumps. One one you can log into and one that you can't, the teams can't. Uh, part of that resolution and the reason why they didn't, they didn't get no real punishment was they entered into an agreement with Formula One to help them understand the changes that needed to be made in the engines, engines because of the change in the biofuel rules. Yeah, we talked about that before. Briefly. Okay. Right. So there, just like Sauber's wind tunnel was the one that was used 
when FIA came up with the, the spec that we have now, um, that's what FI, the FIA used to, they used their wind tunnel to determine what was the best way to come up with the spec that we have right now, okay? Well, Ferrari is the benchmark on what they think the performance that they can get out of the ISIS with biofuels. Okay, so even though Mercedes has the advantage with the ICE with their split turbo, which everybody adopted except for Alpine, uh, Honda adopted it, uh, Ferrari adopted it, everybody, everybody who had a stake in the game adopted it except for Alpine, and that's why they finally made the switch to Mercedes because it, it was, you know, and now it doesn't pay to make that change because they're getting rid of the MGUH. All right? So that's part of that problem, okay? So now you have to give, even though um, Mercedes has the advantage in uh, what they call it, e efficiency, because they're at 55% efficiency, which is the tops as far as the engine performance for any of the teams. They took a step back because of the biofuel. They didn't get get that part of it right. Make sure right. Right. I think that they're gonna they're gonna solve that problem. Right. Right. Okay? Right, right. But they're also taking a step back on the electronics, and all of this had to do with Red Bull coming up with their bullshit scheme to get an engine freeze. I mean, they, they do whatever they can to get any kind of advantage. You know what I mean? It's just ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, so I think that you're going to find Mercedes is going to be ready on the I side. You might find them e equal with Ferrari. The question is, who's going to get the electronics part right? Because now you're going up to, what is it, 300 kilowatts, 350 kilowatts from 160 to 350 kilowatts from the, um, from the electronics, from the, uh, from the battery. So it's more of a 50-50 ICE electronics. Okay, ICE hybrid. And I, that's why you're going to see Mercedes up there in the top three. The question is, well, yeah, so is McLaren going to have, have the same, or are they using the same electronics, the same um, batteries that as Mercedes. Mercedes is using, or are they developing their own? That's the question. But it's not just that. It's the mo motor generator unit that's part of the engine. Because that's what's kicking the power to the engine from the batteries. And I give that advantage. Even though the battery and the electronics for the battery, I, I, you know, Rebel, ha Rebel had the advantage for that. They're going to lose that. But the motor generator unit that's built into the engine, I give that advantage to Mercedes because they have proven they can get that right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, so... That's why I got McLaren, Mercedes, and Ferrari All right. battling it out with the new regulations. Forget the drivers. Forget the arrow. Just on those two things, the ice okay. and the batteries in the motor generator unit. Bet that up. Kenny B is always doing his damn thing when he drops it in. I'm going to tell y'all something. People be hating Kenny B, but guess what? Fuck him. <laughs> I can't be appreciate you. <laughs> you know, I, I I challenge them all to come get some. Right, but they don't that was they don't they, they ain't stepping up, brother. Nobody. It's like what they scared. They scared. They stay, they stay in the dark. They ain't gonna they ain't gonna step up. They scared, bro. They just like coming right, like, bro. But you be oh, you saw my comments, huh? I yeah, ain't scared. You, come I on, ain't you scared. already you already know I know what that's this. Yeah, you put an address on it. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to Kenny B. Big shout out to everybody. We got some super chats to read for sure right here. Uh, we got Kenny. We got Baraka says in 2025, Haas F1 driver lineup includes Oliver Berman and Esteban Ocon, which, listen, I ain't going to front Baraka. I like that. I do like it. I just, 
I just hope that I, I want to see a little bit more ingratiating from Ocon when it comes to his teammate, especially with Oliver Berman. So we'll see how that works, but I do like it. And uh, it's looking promising. Jesse James Bell says Mario Andretti, dirt track, NASCAR, sports car, F1 cars, Indy cars, and I think even eSport, e-racing e as well. You can add that on to that uh, as well as those other disciplines that they have within their organization. And big shout out to Debbie. Appreciate that. So listen, y'all, I'm, I'm telling you, I absolutely enjoy the conversation. I absolutely enjoy talking to you all in person. I actually enjoy hearing the different perspectives. A lot of people don't do it, and a lot of people scared to come up on screen. They just like to, hey, they, but you know what? They really love our channel because they, they stay coming back. They stay coming back. So big shout out to you all. You already know what the business is. It's Wolfpack. This is an F1 Minute. We're going to do more of these. Y'all stay tuned. Y'all stay up, and you already know. Peace out. Be safe. Peace and love. I'm out of here. Later.